The Vitalin T7 is a dual suspension beast of an electric bike. It's a 750 watt, 80 Newton meter class three e-bike with a quoted speed of 28 miles an hour. But we're gonna find out if that's true when we take it outside and test all of these. The bike comes in three different colors, including this awesome chameleon paid job. You can check out the other two colors and even buy one using the first link in the description. This is a massive 20 amp hour battery from Samsung and lucky for us, this bike comes with a three amp charger. That'll top up this battery in no time. And while we wait for that, let's check out exactly what you get when you buy a T7. Starting out back, the bike rolls on a set of CST BFT 26 by four inch wide fat tires with an off-road tread. Fenders come with the bike, they're plastic, and you gotta install them yourself. The bike uses a Bafang power plant. The 750 watt nominal motor can go up to 1000 watts of peak power and put out 80 Newton meters of torque. Here's the drivetrain. You get a Shimano Altus derailleur and a one, two, three, eight speed cassette. Okay, check this out. This has to be the largest chain ring I have ever seen on a bike in a long time. This bike's gonna have no issues getting up to speed with zero ghost pedaling. Nice. We've got some generic cranks and check out these pedals. They're aluminum with some really nice pins in there. This should give us a lot of grit when we're getting bounced around on the trails. The T7's a dual suspension bike and the rear suspension is set up with a four bar linkage. Look at how nice this linkage looks. None of that cheap stuff. And speaking of not cheaping out, I'm so glad to see they went with a DNM air shock. You can pump up the shock right here using a shock pump. So no matter what you weigh, you can tune the shock to get the most out of it. Not only that, but it's got rebound adjustment and a switch here to go into trail mode for stiffer suspension and a full lockout for climbing. Let's leave it in the open position. Here's what the seat looks like. Nice, big, wide, and super cushy. And using the quick clamp here, you can raise the seat from this to this. I'm gonna keep it down here. Take a look at this paint job. It's got that rainbow flake in there. I can't wait to see this out in the sun. Another cool thing about the frame is all the cables are routed inside. You don't see any of the cables outside of the frame. This bike is so slick. Up front, you get a Mozo triple clamp front fork with tons of potential travel. The fork has preload adjustment on the left. To the left is full squish and all the way to the right is locked out. Here's our front fender, plastic, and again, you gotta put this on yourself. Same big set of 26 by four inch wide fat tires with an off-road tread. And check out this huge headlight. Looks like it's got some LEDs on the side for daytime and maybe low and high beam. I don't know, we'll see when we turn it on. For controls on the right, we've got an ergonomic grip and a quarter twist throttle, the Shimano eight speed rapid fire shifter and a Tektro hydraulic brake lever. And here's the left side of the handlebars. We've got lock on ergonomic grips, horn button, and our remote here with power button, mode, and plus and minus keys to go up and down our pedal assist modes. Here's what our horn sounds like. That is loud. Here's how we turn our headlight on. We hold the plus button, the screen dims, and it's got a little headlight display. Well, from what I can tell here in the garage, the beam is actually pretty bright and it's nice and soft. So there's some decent spread everywhere. The bars are mountain bike style. They've got a nice little rise to them and they're actually nice and wide. So they'll be super sturdy on the trails. Here's the stem the bike comes with. It's a little bit long and it'd be kind of a stretch for me. So I went with the short 35 millimeter stem. And here's our landscape mode center mounted display. Let's slap the battery in the bike and turn everything on. Power button. Wow, look at that. So it looks like we have our temperature, our speedometer in miles an hour. We've got our trip, the wattage, and our pedal assist mode that we're currently in. Looks like the bike has one, two, three, four, five different pedal assist modes. And let's see what kind of speed we can get without any weight on the bike. Well, it looks like the bike gets up to 27 to 30 miles an hour. Let's see what we can get outside with some weight on it. All right, boys and girls, we are aboard the Vidlin T7 today for a maiden voyage. Now I'm pretty excited to ride this bike today because so far with the unboxing and build process, everything looks so good on this bike. This display is bright. 
it's really nice hopefully it's accurate for speed but so far everything on this bike feels top notch i hope the performance follows suit let's see what kind of speed we can get with it downhill Time for the hill climb. There's our fire hydrant. I've got a 15% grade hill up ahead of me. Pedal assist number five, throttle only. Let's see what the T7's got uphill. 17, 18, 19, 20 miles an hour already. Looking good. So this bike's got a 48 volt system but a really strong motor. It's probably one of the stronger 750 watt motors out there. It's a Bafang motor, and it's capable of putting out up to 1200 watts of power. Look at this, 16 miles an hour up this hill. That's definitely some of the stronger 750 watt motors out there. Really nice to see, perfect. So let's go to Test Drive Island and uh, see if we can let the T7 stretch his legs. Time for the acceleration. I've got a nice flat piece of road here. Pedal assist number five, throttle only. Let's see how quickly we can get up to 20 miles an hour. Ready? And go. Nine. 12, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20. Woohoo! All right. And it looks like the bike is already unlocked because it wants to go faster than 20 miles an hour. But how much faster? Let's go find out. Time to test the pedal assist modes. Let's put the bike in pedal assist zero. I've got it set in the easiest gear. Let's see what this guy's like to pedal with no power. Well, it's, it's barely doable. It's a heavy bike, right? It's about a hundred pounds with everything said and done. So let's go up. I can barely feel any power, but I'm already going nine miles an hour. So, and are we accurate? Yeah. Actually, we are a little bit slower on the bike speedometer. Nope, perfectly accurate. Nice. Okay, let's go up. Number two, there's the power. Drop a couple gears. About 15 miles an hour. And this is a cadence sensor, right guys? So no torque here. I All I have to do is just spin the pedals and the bike is gonna take me to the speed that's dictated by the pedal assist mode that I'm in. So let's go to three. There you go, drop all the gears. Already pedal assist number three is at 22 miles an hour. Number four. 25, 26, 27. Drop all the gears. 27 miles an hour. And number five. 28, and it just stops giving me power at 28. Woo, this bike's actually got some power. Okay, let's do the same test, but throttle only. Pedal assist number one, let's go. So mode number one takes us to seven miles an hour. Mode number two, oh, there we go. Goes up to... Fourteen miles an hour. Mode number three takes us to twenty one miles an hour. Mode number four 
takes us to 27. And then five all the way to 28. But there's really not a lot of difference between mode four and mode five. It's almost like the bike wants to go faster, but it's locked at 28. Time to test the brakes. There's my 20 foot marker. Got 20 feet to the first marker here. This is where I'm gonna slam on the brakes after going full speed with the Vidalin T7 and see how quickly this massive 100 pound e-bike can come to a stop. I've got pretty high confidence that I can stop before simply because I've got two piston Tektro hydraulic brakes biting on the 180 mil rotors. I hope I can stop before the first marker. And to give this thing the full challenge, I'm gonna do my best to get all the way to 28 miles an hour before that first marker. Do you guys think I can do it? All right, I'm gonna go a little bit past the point I usually turn around just so I can really get up to speed. All right, let's get up to 28 miles an hour and slam on the brakes. 25, 26, 27, 28, here we go. Oh, look at that. It stopped in like, 12, 13 feet. I still have like eight feet left to the marker. That's insane. That's what you get when you have good brakes that are properly bed in, good grippy tires, and good conditions, right? I mean, the ground's really dry, nice and warm, as tacky as it gets. Chef's kiss. So a big bike like this, front suspension, rear suspension, big fat tires, should be decent off-road, right? Let's find out. Yeah. Yeah. Good traction, actually. I'm trying to slide out, but I can't. It's just not letting me. You! Time for the beach test. Let's see if 80 Newton meters and a peak power of 1200 watts is enough to get us through this loose sand. I think we're gonna be all right. Pedal assist number five, throttle only. Let's see how we get. <laughs> Look at this. We're accelerating on the sand. <laughs> yes. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> nice. I really hope you guys can see how beautiful this paint job is in the sun. Just looks sick in person. Just look at this thing. Full suspension, air tuned shock, beautiful paint job. I hope you guys can see that. Fenders, 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery with Samsung cells, huge headlight, mountain bike bars, big 26 by four BFTs. This is a lot of bike in the $2,000 range. Let's have a little fun. <laughs> Let's see if we can get off the beach. Wait, that's not even a question. I know we can get off the beach. Matter of fact, 
Let's take the long way off the beach. Let's go. Give it a little head start here. I dug it into the sand. No problems. Nice. So let's talk a little bit about uh, rod quality and first impressions on the Vidlin T7. So far, my first impressions are very, very positive for a bike like this. For 2,000 bucks, you get a lot of bike for your money here. Dual suspension, big fat tires, air-tuned rear shock, triple crown fork, mountain bike bars, big headlight. I mean, you get it all, right? A bike that can do 28 miles an hour, no problems. A lot of power with that Bafang motor. And it's got cruise control. So I don't know what else you want. A loud horn? Wait, that's got that too. So loud. The contact points are really good as well. You guys know me, I'm not a big fan of the ergonomic grips, but these feel really good. They're almost like leather. They're lock on on both sides, so they'll never spin on you. Um, the pedals, check these out. The pedals are metal with metal pins. So they're giving my feet a ton of traction. You're never gonna have to change these out. The bars are awesome. They're mountain bike style, not too wide, not too thin. They feel great. The only thing I had to change was the stem. The stem they give you with the bike is very, very long, but that's to accommodate larger riders, right? Which I feel this bike is gonna be very good for. But you know what? I'm 5'9", and I fit very well on this bike because it's got a super low standover, right? I can sit on the bike and put both feet flat on the ground, no problem. And that's at 5'9". So even if you're a little shorter than I am, you can definitely reach the, the ground by just stretching your toes out a little bit. And you can do what I did here, get a nice short stem and bring the bars back a little bit so you're nice and upright. I love how this bike feels when you just lounge in on it. And the handling, I mean, the bike feels awesome. I love the suspension, especially the rear suspension. It's a DNM shock that's got an air valve, so you can pump it up as much or as little as you want. Whatever you weigh, you can tune the bike to your liking. It's also got rebound, so you can slow it up a little bit. And it's got a lockout, so it's got every single thing you could possibly want to tune on an air sprung rear shock. The front fork though, I can't really say the same. Um, it feels great. It doesn't have that annoying springy feel, but for a fork that looks like it has 180 mils of travel, it really only has like 50 maybe? Like that's how much travel you get. Out of all of that, that's what you get. So it feels good, but the fork could be a little better. Easily done. You can get a fork on Amazon for two, three hundred bucks if it's something you really, really want is to take the bike off road and really have it perform a lot better on the trails. But I can bottom that thing out pretty easy right now. It's got preload and it's got a lockout here, right? So there's tons of tunability, just not a ton of travel. That's it. And so far, this is probably one of my favorite screens and displays on any e-bike in any price point. It's bright, it's really nice, it's color display, and it has absolutely everything you could possibly want to see. From your temperature to your speed, uh, the battery you can actually see in progress bar as well as voltage, which is very, very accurate. You can actually see your watt meter, right? So you see here is zero W. Right, when I hit the throttle, there you go. Getting up to 1,000, 1,243 watts peak power when the bike is accelerating. So you can see exactly how much 
wattage the bike is pulling from the battery at any given time, which is awesome. And you can see exactly the voltage you've got left in it. So you can get a very accurate read on your potential range. And the settings are super easy too. Double click the M button and you've got all of your settings here from your clock to your temperature. You can also go in the advanced settings here and play with your wheel size, uh, speed limit if you wanna make the bike a little bit slower. I don't know why anybody would wanna do that, but you can. Look at this guys. This is what you get when you have a quality battery like the Samsung battery that's on here. I'm well over halfway on the battery and I'm still getting full 27, 28 miles an hour on this bike. Awesome. So million dollar question, who is the Vidalin T7 for? In my personal opinion, it's gonna be for someone who wants a really comfortable cruiser that's actually capable anywhere you take it. You want a fast bike, it goes up to 28 miles an hour. You want a bike that handles very, very well on the road and off, this one does that. You want a bike that gives you a ton of value for the $2,000 range, this one does that too. Dual suspension, big 20 amp hour battery, quality battery from Samsung. I've had a ton of fun riding this. Whether you're big or small, you're gonna find a comfortable position on this bike. Now, one thing to note, it is a big bike and it is very heavy. So if you're a smaller rider that's, you know, a little bit weak, you know, potentially this might be a little bit too much bike for you. But if you're a heavy rider that's in the two to 250 range, this bike is perfectly suited for that. Lots of power, lots of torque. The suspension is stiff enough to support the weight. There's no problems there. You can tune it to your weight. Although it looks like one, I don't think this is an off-road bike. I think this is a bike that's just gonna be for someone who really wants comfort anywhere they go. Whether the road is smooth or rough, the Vidalin T7's gonna actually give you a really comfortable ride. And if you guys want a bike that turns heads, I definitely recommend to go with this chameleon color. It's just gorgeous. My two cents. So if you guys wanna check out the Vidalin T7 for yourself, the first link in the description will take you right to their website where you can order one. And if I can get my hands on any discount codes to help you guys with the price, it'll be right underneath the link. So don't forget to use it. I wanna thank the people at Vidalin for sending the T7 out for review. I had a blast riding this bike. And if the T7 is not the bike for you, that's okay. Maybe the bike in this video will be more what you're looking for. I'll see you there.